This is the same simulation as in the other video, which I linked in the description, but this time gas particles don't all fall down in the same direction, but fall down towards the center of a central sphere. This shows what the experiments in the other video would have looked like if the left and right container boundaries were removed. As can be seen, the important observations do not change. Air density still decreases with height, in this case distance from the sphere's center. Air pressure also decreases with height, but since there are no vertical boundaries here, I can't easily measure and visualize it. The atmosphere still does not get sucked into outer space. I'll turn on particle traces again. Once in a while, a particle gets pushed hard and takes a long trip into space, but it always comes back down. Let's observe for a few moments. Now that we've established how this works, let's have some fun. I can cheat and siphon energy out of the simulation by pressing a key. Let me do that and see what happens to the atmosphere when it cools down. First, I'll turn on color mapping, where each particle's temperature is mapped to a color scale from blue, cold, to red, hot. As I cool down the atmosphere, you can see it turning blue and coming to rest on the sphere's surface, forming a global ocean of sorts that conforms nicely to the surface. Now, to play us out, let's have an earth-shattering kaboom. I can simulate a gigantic volcanic eruption by rapidly heating the atmosphere inside a tiny area, in this case at the north pole of the sphere. Here it comes, appreciate the fireworks. Notice how the top layer of the atmosphere all around the globe heats up as it gets hit with hot particles ejected by the eruption.